Planet Earth is estimated to be home to 10 quintillion insects, but at the time of writing, there are only 222 insect cards in Magic the Gathering. Their designs range from creative liberties to portraits of what it's like outside of your window. I like to make videos about real insects and fictional depictions of insects to raise awareness about them because without insects, our lives would not be sustainable, even though the same cannot be said for them. Magic is a game I've played for nearly a decade, and while I've made some shorts about the insects in Magic, today I'll be highlighting some iconic insect cards and their inspirations ranging from real bugs to philosophical. I even have a preview, so stay tuned for that. Because spiders aren't insects, Magic wouldn't see an insect card until its seventh set, Legends, in the form of carrion ants, emerald dragonfly, killer bees, and Zira. The circle of life often highlights the beginning and end of life without acknowledging the fate of remains. Much of microbial, fungal, and insect life is sustained from the remains of life that has passed. It seems only fitting that carrion ants would be present in the inception of insects in magic. Carrion refers to rotting flesh, where a variety of insects can be found. Ants are known to feed on corpses at all stages of decomposition, but also avoid corpses with infections that could be transmitted to their colony. By today's standards, carrying ants is unplayable and did not see competitive play back in 1994. Carrion ants still fulfilled the purpose of being a bad card. It teaches us that bad cards are necessary for players to determine what constitutes a good card. It does now have an infinite combo with Aishaya, Soul of the Wild, and Blossoming Tortoise. So that's cute. Deadly Insect depicts a cute little mantis insect that's the size of a pigeon. It has the characteristics of many insects, so we'll call it a Dominarian Mantis. Creatures with high attack and only one toughness are a fun design space that we can call a glass cannon because they're high attack and low health. They're fragile, the fragile little guys. Deadly insects saw play alongside other bugs like giant trapdoor spider and woolly spider in the 1996 Pro Tour Championship deck known colloquially as the worst deck to win a Pro Tour. I think it's cool that in spite of its low toughness, the ability to not be targeted made it a powerful creature 28 years ago. The largest mantis is the Toxodera denticulata, which is 20 centimeters in body length. And I'm no bird expert, but bluebirds average 16 to 19 centimeters in body length, so the scaling of this art isn't entirely far-fetched. Deadly Insect teaches us that magic is not a fixed game, and in the right environment, the worst cards can be the most resilient. Barb's Shocker has eight legs with a visual resemblance to an ant. Ants usually have six legs. While this may just be how ants are meant to look on Dominaria, this may also be intentional. If you've seen my other videos, you'd know some spiders mimic ants called Myrmarachne. Mimicking ants is a survival tactic to deter predators, as ants are typically better at grouping up and protecting themselves. I wonder if this was an intention behind the art direction of Barbed Shocker, but I also feel like it would be a spider creature type if it was a spider. But maybe it's just really good at hiding. Functional evasiveness in the form of trample and the effect of disrupting your opponent after doing some damage to them ties into the theme of a spider disguised as an ant, though. Barb Shocker hasn't seen any competitive play, but its ability has grown to be a fun surprise in Commander for me. Oftentimes, my opponent will tune out when I explain the ability, let the two damage come in, and then find out what it does. Barbed Shocker teaches us that powerful effects tied to narrow execution add a layer of fun to the way a game is played. Swamp Mosquito's name leaves little to the imagination, but mosquitoes are flies, and flies only have two wings, so the art of Swamp Mosquito depicting four is a little inaccurate. Swamp Mosquito was among the few early creatures in Legends Through Visions to give poison counters, but not in the form of damage like with Infect. 
Infect wasn't keyworded until Scars of Mirrodin, which was 13 years later. Poison was borderline unplayable until Scars of Mirrodin, but since then it's seen a great amount of play across a variety of formats. Some love it, some hate it, but the re-emergence of it far outshone its sidelined origins. Swamp Mosquito teaches us that some mechanics need to fail to one day succeed. This entry contains light spoilers of The Fly, a film from 1986 and 1958. If you don't want to know the general plot, do what you gotta do. Delver of Secrets is a scientist who transforms into an insect resembling a humanoid fly. Inspired by the fly, Delver of Secrets transformation into a horrific fly is triggered from the scientist advancing the knowledge of the indifferent player. In magic, decks thematically represent the spells available to a player. When cards are removed from the deck via mill, the spell that does so represents the loss of knowledge and conversely, when cards are drawn, the card represents gaining knowledge. Much like the fly's protagonist pushing what's in his control in the form of science to satiate the pursuit of notoriety beyond his control, Delver of Secrets pushes its ability to provide card advantage for the player in the hopes of being notable to the player. Player. Both pursuits are short-sighted in how this distances the scientist from his peers and how the card advantage comes at the cost of revealing information to the opponent. Both pay the price for their aspirations, but Jeff Goldblum's discovery ultimately benefits the machinations of science, and Delver of Secrets transformation advances the player's objectives. Archetypically, The Fly reads as a tragic plot involving self-inflicted transformation and Delver of Secrets represents a turning point in upside outweighing downsides in play design, as the card quickly became an auto-include in blue decks ranging from standard to vintage. Delver of Secrets teaches us that deep inspiration from art outside of our work can lead to artistic and functional cohesion that transforms what constitutes a magic card. Wizards of the Coast has granted me a free preview card, Right of the Moth a 4-mana reanimation spell with flashback. Across cultures, white moths represent an omen of death, and life persisting in the darkness, likely due to their generally nocturnal nature. While moths and butterflies represent transformation, butterflies are usually ascribed to angelic depiction, and moths often represent flirtation with death and decay. Moths are observed to fly towards an open flame rather than take comfort in its warmth. The Gita notes, men rush to their doom like moths flying to their death in the candle flame. This is not the first time the moth has represented rebirth in magic, with Luminous Broodmoth doing so as well. How fitting that Rite of the Moth would be the preview card that motivated me to make another insect video. To create art is to breathe life into it, from sources ranging from lived experience, expertise, spiritual connectiveness, and much more. The existence of online hosting platforms has altered the landscape for preserving and sharing art, but it's also shifted what constitutes value. Trinkets like like count, View count, subscriber count, and viewer duration become the name of the game, even though it doesn't always translate to the profundity of a creative work or even the income generated by it. If you were to work on a piece for three months and it only got a thousand views, would that be a failure? How about if you ran it in a theater and only a hundred people attended? How about if you hosted a private screening and only 10 of your friends came to see it? See how fickle that is? To me, the melding of artistic expression and the objectivity of science is a balancing act, and the breathing of creative truths into it keeps it aligned. One change I've made is being intentional about watching videos on this platform by searching a topic and filtering by recent uploads so that the algorithm doesn't gatekeep the art that I'm exposed to and so that creators on this platform are seen at least by me. 
Right of the Moth teaches us that being bold and playing with how we package our own proverbial bug facts can lead to shifts in perspective down the line that breathe new life into our creative endeavors. In that transformation lies a rebirth. This video was funded by me giving Plasma and my Patreon supporter. If you'd like to help with some of the costs of making these, I don't hide any content behind paywalls, but I do have a Patreon and I'd love your support. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.